DIY Brass Guy here with five tone hacks to help improve your tone as quickly as possible. These work for any brass instrument, trumpet, cornet, French horn, euphonium, trombone, tuba, chimbasso, flugelhorn, helicon. By the way, if you know what a helicon is, let us know in the comments. So there's no magic pill that's going to give you a great tone, but there are a few things you can do to speed up the process and raise the ceiling for your absolute best sound. The basic components of a great tone are a rich, efficient buzz supported by the right amount of air. Now that seems very simple, but there's a lot to it. Here are some hacks to get you there faster. Number one, a practice mute. I got this one on Amazon. It's about $20. Well worth it. Uh, there's a link in the comments that'll take you straight there. Uh, if you have a roommate or parents or anyone, tell them what you're doing. They'll probably chip in or even buy it for you. Uh, it's the Pampet. Uh, it's, pra it's plastic. And the thing I love about it is that it's got this foam rubber that seals it to your bell rather than cork like a lot of mutes do. And over time, the, the condensation gets in there to it and it makes it crack off and you have to replace it and it scratches up the inside of your bell and all that. There's no metal on here. It's all plastic and won't hurt it. I've had it for a couple of years. It's held up really nicely. So uh, the thing about this is that, yes, it makes your tone softer, but the real value in helping with your sound is that it forces your stomach to really push the air to get it out. And if you can train your stomach to do that all the time so that when you pull the mute out, you're still pushing that much, man, your sound is really going to open up. Okay, It helps get the air going like crazy. And then when you take the mute out, you have this big glorious sound and you just got to try to keep it. Hack number two, buzzing tunes on the mouthpiece. When you don't have the horn in your hand and you just have the mouthpiece, you really have to focus on the pitch and your lips and embouchure and your whole mechanism that creates the buzz have to do the right thing in order to make the buzz happen. The trombone provides a lot of resistance. The, when you, the mouthpiece by itself has very little. So your corners have to be firm, your chin has to be flat, everything has to be doing the right thing in order for a buzz to happen. And I like buzzing because I can buzz whatever I want. It could be a song that I like off the radio, it could be something I sang growing up, it could be anything that you know in your head that you could you know, sing from memory. That's the point of buzzing. Um, also, you can go back and forth with your music. So you're working on band music, you're working on a solo, whatever you're practicing, play a little bit of it, a couple of bars, maybe a phrase if it's really difficult, and then buzz it, go back and forth. Don't just play on your trombone for 20 minutes and then take your mouthpiece off and buzz for 20 minutes. That's not gonna give you the maximum benefit as quickly as possible. You wanna go back and forth pretty quickly. Um, that's how the buzzing helps you the most efficiently. The best thing about buzzing a song from memory is that you're singing it in your head, but you're having to buzz it with your lips. So you're getting that connection going between your inner ear and your lips that ultimately is going to lead to you being a great artist. If you really want to express yourself through your instrument, it has to be coming from, from your creative part of your brain, your inner ear. Uh, I like to think of it. And if you can connect that to your buzz, you can play anything that you can imagine in your head. Hack number three, make a cutaway mouthpiece. Now, this is a pretty crazy thing. Do not do it on your own. I did not make this one myself. I took it to my neighbor who is a contractor. He works in construction. Um, he knows what kind of saw you have to use to cut through stainless steel, and then you've got to smooth it out with something called a lathe. If you don't know how to work a lathe, do not try this yourself because um, you, you don't want to get metal slivers from this thing. Now, this takes mouthpiece playing to a whole nother level. It takes even more of the resistance away and it forces your lips to do the right thing. Again, like a mouthpiece, but up a notch. Uh, another benefit of the cutaway is that you can put it in your horn and... You, it's like virtual reality trombone playing. It's like you're simulating playing. It really helps your ear find the right pitches. 
uh, which I know can be difficult to do sometimes when you're just buzzing. But uh, now you're doing everything right. And now all the mechanism is working just like it's supposed to be. Uh, but it's taking a lot of air, way more than even the mouthpiece calls for. One more benefit is that you can see what's going on. If you practice in a mirror, uh, you can see exactly what's happening with your buzz. You can see inside the mouthpiece. You can tell if you're, uh, if you're not buzzing right in the middle. You can tell if you've got all your lips buzzing all the way across, or if you just have parts of it. If you have a double vibration going, you can see that as well. Uh, it's a very handy tool for monitoring yourself for good habits and bad habits. And then teachers, it's a good tool for seeing what your students have going on inside the mouthpiece. Tone hack number four, a PVC pipe necklace. Now, David Waters used to be the bass trombonist in the Houston Symphony. And when he taught at Rice, he had one of these around his neck all the time. And he attributed every mistake that you make on the trombone to not breathing properly. Now, Proper breath. You want it relaxed. You want it to go all the way down to your stomach and fill from the bottom up. And uh, this right here will help you do that. It's about four inches long. You put it a couple of inches into your mouth and then uh, you take a deep breath through it. You'll feel the cold on the back of your throat and you will get maximum air in every time with this thing. Uh, I actually make them. Uh, you can buy one if uh, you'll check the comments. I'll give you the information on how to get one of these but it's great. And David Waters actually does it in the middle of his playing. He'll be playing along. And then when he misses the note, he'll just take it down, put it in and go right back to playing. Uh, that's how he uses it. I don't necessarily do it every time like that, but it does help in your warm ups. It helps to get your air going. I would say do it before every one of your uh, warm up exercises. Uh, that you're playing. And then even when you are working on some etudes or solos, uh, it's handy, handy to make sure you're doing the right thing. If you notice that all these things are just ways to make your body do the right thing, and we're just trying to make good habits here. Number five tone hack, listen to great players on your instrument. Listen to the best of the best, the major symphony players, the major studio players, you need to be careful about who you listen to because there's an old saying that says garbage in, garbage out. That's also true for tone and for your sound on your instrument. Good sounds in, good sounds out. Good tones in, good brass tone out. You have to train your brain what the goal is. Okay, It will help you get there as fast as possible if you give it good information. Your brain is amazing, and that's what we're trying to do here. You have to teach it what you're trying to uh, what you're trying to emulate from these models that you feed it. So I'll list some great brass players for you in the comments, and so, and I have some other videos on um, on my channel of Wayne Bergeron, Dave Cooper, uh, Joe Alessi, Jim Self. Some of the greatest brass players in the in the world have made videos and you can hear them perform and some of them give instructional lessons. I tried to track down some of those for y'all as well. And they're on uh, on my playlist as well. So as I'm sure you noticed, all five of these things are just ways of making your body do the right thing, do it just the right way, breathing right, blowing right, buzzing right, um, <clears throat> getting the right muscles to work. And our goal is to train your body to know how to do these things so that you don't have to think about them, so that you can worry about the artistic side of what you're trying to say musically. Um, your body needs to be on autopilot doing these things, which is why they need to become habits. How do they become habits? By repetition. There's no shortcut for that, but at least while you're working, you wanna be as efficient as possible in doing things the right way. I'm the DIY Brass Guy with five brass hacks. Please uh, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Remember, Everyone can make great music.